we absolutely need to have a conversation about what is the future of social housing, what does it exist to do, um, and how do we support it and support families most in need. Now, I'm a housing professional. It's my job, and I'm absolutely right, I believe, to say that investment must be in housing. But even if he is correct, everybody in this room knows that if you cut housing, you're absolutely not doing anything for health and education, because good housing means good educational opportunities, and it means good health outcomes. The thing that keeps me up at night, and I do genuinely mean that, we are facing a decade of rising poverty. We know it, many of us feel it on a daily basis, and you certainly know it from the people that you work with. We face very sluggish growth over the next number of years. You all know that, and it's been discussed at length at conference. And unemployment continues to grow, although the rate of growth has begun to slow. Where does housing sit? Well, at the moment, all of the changes um, in terms of housing have been at the austerity side of that weighing scales. And my job and your job is to absolutely convince government that investment in housing does yield economic outcomes. We are, I think, facing, um, through changes to third level education, um, a generation of lost housing professionals. I am worried massively about the changes that that will take. And our job at the CIH is to continue to attract and retain skills in the sector, and we're not going to stop doing that. So uh, the, we, I, we're all supportive of the, the, the Minister's approach uh, to whole sector or whole market housing, recognising that only by all the uh, sectors, all the levers working together, uh, are we going to have a positive response, so we're going to achieve together what we can't achieve apart. And the, yes, that includes the coalition under Homes for All Cymru, uh, but it also includes those um, delivering uh, practically out there, the hacker construction sector, private landlords, mortgage lenders, etc., working alongside the uh, social uh, housing providers and, and homelessness charities and supported housing providers uh, and others. One of the things about the cross-party housing group and about the Assembly is we can often agree on what the issues are. We don't always agree on the solutions, but I think we are getting there in terms of, of working our way in a pragmatic and practical way towards finding solutions for them. The other thing that we all agree on is early intervention on homelessness. Um, I, I don't think there's a fag paper uh, between any of us um, uh, in relation to that. When we set the session up, we were, we were very hopeful that we'd be able to demonstrate um, a very strong cross-party support. And there's been about 12, 13, 14 issues uh, where there seems to be you know, quite a lot of, of consensus across the party. It's not really about winning and losing in this competition because, as you can see, we've got three fantastic Rising Stars finalists. And I think um, we can kind of rest assured, really, that the future of Welsh housing is safe in their hands. That your winner of Rising Stars Cymru 2012, ladies and gentlemen, is Claire Way. Minister, we're pleased you've come to TIE today. Um, what we'd like to ask you really, what do you see as the main priorities driving housing forward over the next, next months and years? Yes, thanks for that and thanks for the opportunity to be with you. Uh, TIE 2012 is a, a hugely important gathering of, of, of uh, key people in the housing sector. Uh, the most important things, my agenda has been following three key words really, quality, affordability and supply. Now, there's nothing novel about singling out those three headlines, I suppose, in terms of housing policy as it's gone on quite consensually in Wales for some time. But, of course, we set those now, those priorities, within a very diff difficult and different context uh, of economic downturn and huge changes, for the worse, in my opinion, from the UK government policy side of things. So, facing up to housing quality, housing supply, and people's ability to afford a, a, quality, a decent home, uh, that's in a new context. Mm. You mentioned in an article in Welsh Housing Quarterly last year that you think we should be boxing clever, that yes. you know, we needed to sort of be innovative and, and take a few more risks, I think was where you were going with that. I mean, you know, what, what sort of stuff would you like the sector to do in response to that? Well, first of all, I think we've branched out as a Welsh Government uh, and, and have begun to spread our wings, really, if you like, across the whole housing policy agenda. We've described ourselves now as system stewards, really, so that I think the traditional conversation in Wales has been has concentrated mainly upon social housing and the provision of social housing. That'll carry on, undiminished, but at the same time we need to think about those challenges of quality and affordability, particularly and supply, across all forms of tenure. Just one final question uh, here. 
you, you, you were a big fan of the eye to eye um, project and the Can Do Toolkit, and you were able yes. to announce some very good news today. Uh, you know, do you see that developing more in the future? I think so. Uh, I mean, eye to eye has definitely caught the eyes of, of government more widely. I mean, the, 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 the appreciation of the good work that eye to eye has done, and it's not been easy, it's been no. a difficult journey, but the appreciation of the success there is, is, is starting to spread beyond housing, really into other areas of government thinking and I'm very hopeful that this sort of model will be something that we'll be able to brand as a Welsh way of doing things. But from, from our perspective, Grania, um, CIH prides itself on the fact that it's got its, its foot in all camps, if you like, in terms of uh, different parts of the UK. How do you see the sort of Welsh shows in scene fitting into what CIH is thinking about at the moment? I think this is a real turning point, 2012, for Welsh housing. Um, a massively unique time that we've all been waiting for for such a long time to have the first Welsh housing bill since devolution. So in many ways, um, it's an opportunity to do all of the things that we've wanted to do as housing professionals in Wales for quite some time. But the pressure's on um, and we can learn from Scotland in particular who have shown real bravery um, uh, in legislative terms, in terms of bringing forward several housing housing bills and pieces of legislation. But we can also learn that there are ways in which to, to bring forward a lot of ideas in one piece of legislation. So a really, really important time. What I would say to the sector is, don't miss this opportunity. Yeah. Mm. Do not miss this opportunity to shape the views of the minister and also to think about not just what goes into the bill, but what life will look like mm. post legislation. Yeah. In other words, let's learn the lessons from Scotland who have had to learn about how quickly you implement legislation, how you resource legislation. Scotland was massively ambitious with a homelessness target for 2012. I absolutely applaud that. So really the, the pressure's on just how ambitious can Wales be, how well do you use the devolution levers that are there. But this has to be about sector-led solutions. It can't just be about government having vision. It has to be about the sector matching it with its own vision and being very clear what it wants to achieve. I was, I was going to come on to that point, actually, because it's, it's, it's something that I've heard you say a, a number of times. Um, in a way, in Wales, we're going with the grain of politics, and the cross-party housing group is a good example of how, you know, there's a lot of consensus on what needs to be done. Obviously, challenges, but how we actually achieve it. But I, I, I was thinking in particular, um, yes, we can, we can put our stall up and say we don't agree with what's happening, you know, we'd like changes, we can produce the evidence, but, but if we lose the argument, then we're in a difficult position. So this idea of the sector taking some responsibility, even though the challenges are huge, seems to me something at the core of what you're saying. Absolutely. Uh, all of the knowledge and the expertise that we need to answer some of the big questions are there. They exist within the sector. And in fact, many of the professionals who are in the sector have answered some of these questions before. This is not the first recession. It will probably not be the last. Um, and the sector itself needs to ask some fundamental questions. What do we exist to do? How do we house the most vulnerable while also providing opportunities for aspiration? They are, they are really big questions. And the great thing about it is the answer is lies within housing professionals. Our job as the professional body is to continue to provide them with the learning, the development that they need, provide opportunities to bring the sector together, bring the profession together. But people join the CIH because they want to be agents of change. And that's something I know I'm committed to and you're committed to, Keith. And the question is how we give them that opportunity in the next few years. 